Obviously, a big part of building interfaces is working with HTML forms. So in this video, we're going to focus on the tools that uh, Vue.js provides for interacting with our form inputs. And to begin with, we can review what we know already, uh, rewinding and thinking back to part two of the series where we had like a sampling of different Vue.js features. One of the things we learned about was the V model directive, which allowed us to bind a data property to a form input. And what we saw when we did that was when we changed the value of that input anywhere that we we're using the associated data property, uh, we would see those changes reflected too. All right, so when we start entering text into our answer input here in this paragraph later where we're outputting the answer, we could see that dynamically and reactively changes accordingly. And similarly, of course, within our JavaScript as well, when we try to uh, reference the answer data property within our code, uh, we saw whatever was just typed into that text input. All right, so in terms of working with your basic text inputs and the vModel directive, it's really straightforward. You change the text input, that's going to change the uh, data property. You change the data property, it would also change what we see in that input. Moving on though, let's talk about some other form input types and what vModel does with them, starting with things like checkboxes. When you're working with checkboxes, you want to model them after some data property that's going to return a Boolean value of true or false. And if that value is true, the associated checkbox will be checked. If it's false, it'll be unchecked. Let's pull this basic example into FlashWord. Uh, this is imagining, let's say down the road, we added a feature where we could toggle on and off a hint for the given word. We could use something like this. Uh, not something we're actually going to implement now, but we could just pull this in for an example. All right, and I'll add this, uh, we'll add it right after the, um, the text input itself. All right, now this is modeling after data property of show hint. So I will initialize that for the purposes of this demo to be false. So coming back to our page, I'm going to refresh it. And because show hint is false to begin with, we should see that the checkbox is not checked off. But if we alter that, if I check it, that's going to toggle show hint to be true. And you can see that makes our, uh, our hint with our placeholder here actually appear on the page because coming back and looking at the example code for this, we could see that we have this div that's going to conditionally render based on whether show hint is true or false. All right, so again, just toggling this checkbox is going to toggle that show hint data property. And the inverse of that is true as well. If we were to change show hint, that would impact the checkbox uh, and I'll just show that manually here with my web inspector. Let's reference that uh, show hint data property. And I'm just going to manually set it to false. And you should see that it unchecks the checkbox. Or if we change it back to true, we see that reactively uh, check it off again. Now, that's how it works when you're dealing with a single checkbox. You're, you're dealing with this true false scenario. Uh, but sometimes we see groups of checkboxes where we might have multiple options we want to choose from. Uh, and as an example of that, let's go back to the notes. I also have another hypothetical we can work with. Let's imagine we had categories of words that we could show in our application, such as greetings, colors, verbs. For each of these checkboxes, we could model it after the same data property. And for that data property, we would manage it via an array, which would include the values of those checkboxes. Let's see this in action. So I'm going to pull this into our working demo. And uh, I'm just going to throw this at the end. This is not something we're actually integrating now. This is just for the um, example. All right, so we've got our three checkboxes there. We want to model it after this categories. So in our JavaScript, let's set up that data property. And to begin with, I'm just going to initialize it as a empty array. So when we load this, what we should see is those th uh, three checkboxes, but none of them should be checked. However, if we go back to our array, let's uh, add some values here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick from the values I set on my checkboxes. So I've got the option of greetings, colors, or verbs. So let's start with just greetings. I'll add that to my array. So now when I refresh the page, you can see that greetings is checked off. And let's say I wanted them all checked off by default. I would just add all of those values to this array. The other thing we can observe is as we change these text inputs, it's going to dynamically update our categories data property. Uh, and to show this, let's go ahead and just first output what it is uh, currently set to. So again, I'll reference uh, within my data, let's look at our categories. All right, and as expected, we have greetings, verbs, and colors. So let's say I unchecked verbs, and I'll output it again. 
you can see we were reduced down to two values and we can continue down this path until eventually we have uh, an empty data set again. Uh, now, one thing you'll observe as I'm outputting the value for categories here, we're not seeing it as just a plain array. We're seeing it as this proxy object. And this is just something that Vue is doing behind the scenes. Uh, it allows it to make the data reactive by creating this special proxy object, uh, which if you go back to, I think it was part three of this series, uh, when we were talking about behind the scenes, how Vue is working, how its uh, reactivity system is set up, there was a mention there of proxies if you want to dig into that some more. It doesn't really impact any of the things that we're doing, but just I wanted to mention that uh, based on this output here. Moving beyond checkboxes, let's also take a look at what we can do with radio inputs. So the example I have here is imagine we added the ability for the uh, visitor to choose the difficulty level of the words that they were seeing. So we have three radio buttons, one for easy, moderate, and difficult. And each of these is modeled after this level data property, which you could see in this example, I'm defaulting it to easy. So what this would mean is when we first loaded this page, the first radio input that has the value of easy would be uh, selected. Um, now notice the difference between radios and checkboxes. With checkboxes, we set our value via an array. And that makes sense because with checkboxes, you can have multiple um, checkboxes selected at the same time within one group. Whereas with radio buttons, they're mutually exclusive. So within a group of radio buttons, you should only ever have one of them checked. So you should only have one value associated with it. So we set it to just be a single string versus an array of multiple strings. Uh, let's see radios in action. So I'm going to pull this in to our code. And I'll just swap this out with my checkboxes. Um, the other thing I'm going to pull in while we're talking about radio buttons is I also want to pull in a select example, just because it works very similar to radio buttons. So here we have a select. We're going to actually model it after the same data property level, just like we were doing with our radio buttons. And then we're going to have our three options that have the appropriate value for easy, moderate, and difficult. All right, and then let's go ahead and set up that level data property that we're using here. We'll default it to easy. And uh, this is blending together a little bit. So let me just throw a couple headings in there to distinguish these different inputs. All right, that's a little bit clearer. All right, so you can see for both of these, because the level is set to easy on initial page load, that's the option that we're seeing chosen. And then if I change it, let's say I switch it via my radio buttons, I update level to be difficult. You can see that's dynamically reflected in the dropdown. And then likewise in the dropdown, if I alter level, I change it to moderate, we'll see that reflected in the radio buttons. All right, now typically you wouldn't have two input types for the same information on the page, but this was just a good way to demonstrate how we can associate data properties with radios and drop downs. And of course, because everything is reactive when it comes to our data properties, as we're changing that through one element, we can see those uh, changes reflected. So we've got text inputs, we've got checkboxes, radio buttons, drop downs. Uh, the last form element I want to take a look at is the text area. So let's work up an example for that. And for our hypothetical feature we could use this for, let's say we were going to challenge the visitor to use the word in a sentence. So as part of their uh, submission, they had to enter a sentence using the word that they're guessing. All right, so we'll throw a text area here. And then we're going to use that vModel directive again, and we'll model, uh, model it after a data property we'll just call sentence. So over in our data properties, I will initialize that and I will initialize it as an empty string. Um, and the other thing I'll do just to see this uh, reactive data is I'll just output the sentence to the page below the text area. All right, so refreshing our interface, here's our text area. And if I enter some text there, we can see it updates our description accordingly. Uh, so basically it works the same as our text input we saw earlier with the answer where you just model it after some data property that's uh, set to a string. Um, the one thing I will note about the text area is sometimes um, with text areas, our instinct in terms of like setting default content for a text area is we typically put the default content within the text area element itself. That's how we would do things in regular HTML. 
So seeing that, your instincts might say, well, let's just text interpolate the sentence data property as that content, right? Thinking that you could do something like that. Uh, and that would work in terms of setting the initial content, right? So let's say we had set this to, instead of an empty string, we had some content here. When we first loaded the page, we would see that it would fill that text area with that content, but it wouldn't be a two-way data binding, right? If we change that, you could see it's not actually updating that sentence. All right, so if you do want that two-way binding, uh, you do have to use that V model directive to not only uh, set the initial value, but also update it later based on what is typed into that text area. And ending there with the text area, that's the last uh, form input type we're gonna look at. Uh, it covers most of the most common bases. And one thing I wanna end this video with and really emphasize as we're looking at these examples is just to focus again on how view is very much using that declarative style of programming where we're focusing on the data and then we're relying on view behind the scenes to handle the mechanics. This was especially true for things like our radio buttons and our checkboxes and our selects. We didn't really have to worry about how those options were chosen. Um, you know, we didn't have to target them specifically and say, okay, when this value changes, update it so that this option is chosen. All we really had to do was worry about the data and think about what the data was set to. And Vue took care of everything to update the interface for us. All right, and that's really useful because that allows us to focus on our data, focus on the needs and, and the goals of our application without having to worry about all those little details that we would have to work with if we were working with just vanilla JavaScript. And speaking of the goals and the needs of our application, I do wanna also point out that I recognize a lot of the examples in this video were really uh, hypothetical. Uh, we haven't actually done anything with like a difficulty level chooser yet or choosing category words. Uh, but everything we're doing right now in these early videos is really just about the foundational work within Vue, understanding the basics of how to work with these different directives and tools. Uh, we have a couple more steps we have to cover in that foundation, but then in a couple videos, we're going to start to pull these pieces together. We're going to focus in more on what this Flash Word application is actually doing and see some more concrete examples on how to use these tools. So if things are feeling a little fuzzy, a little abstract right now, uh, just hang with me. We got a few more things to cover, like I said, and then we'll, we'll start to put this to use and it'll uh, hopefully make the pieces start to click together.